All right, we got uh, the new software version 2019.50.1. Um, most people have probably already seen the release notes. I'll just go through them pretty quickly. Um, what, what I'm excited to try real quickly here is the driving visualiz visualization improvements. So now we'll be able to see stop signs and stop lights. And um, people are even talking about being able to see turn lanes uh, with the turn arrows the X before a, uh, a railroad crossing, bike lanes, etc. So um, I've got a little bit of everything uh, right near my house to test out. I can't think of a railroad crossing, but uh, we definitely have some bike lanes, plenty of stop signs and, uh, and stop lights. And then the voice commands, uh, they've, they've really improved the voice commands. They've expanded it quite a bit. Um, and then the phone improvements, it will now be able to read your uh, text messages to you and uh, you're supposed to be able to dictate back and send them. Um, I did notice when the car booted up from the software, um, when it did the reboot after the software update, it uh, I got a message request on my phone um, asking uh, to give permission to the car to access my messages. So um, if, you, if you're not getting that sort of request from your phone, uh, you may want to unpair and repair and kind of force that camp mode which uh, this is cool uh I, I personally i don't care anything about it i'm not really going to camp on my car but um i you know that's that's a nice thing to have tesla theater uh they've added twitch uh to the car they've added stardew valley and backgammon um and then this is the voice keyboard where you can dictate uh or respond to a text message and it will um input it and supposedly send it tracks i you know who knows what this is it's, it's supposed to be a uh basically like the sketch pad but you can create your own music um i'll draw that out when i get really bored but that's not today and um save dash cam clips on honk that's interesting if you honk now it will download so that you don't have to hit that um and then they've got some new language support so let's go into settings i'm going to go into autopilot i think there's yeah so go into settings, go into autopilot, and make sure you enable the full self-driving visualization preview. So um, there we go. Let's uh, let's get moving here. Let's see what we got. Oh, there we go. Stop sign being picked up right away. Okay, the light is green. Got two turn lanes over here. Yep, it's picking up. Yep, that's awesome. It's showing the traffic lights. It's showing them as green and the turns as red. That was nice. Um, it's not showing me this bike lane. Maybe once it sees the icon. Yeah, so we got an icon coming up here or a road marking. Yep, very nice. It's picking up the cycle lane. Um, it only does it when it when it sees the uh, the 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 painting, the, the road marking indicating that it's a bike lane, but that is nice. Picked up that traffic light. Really nice. It showed the one is yellow and okay, it's working beautifully. Um, we're coming up on a spot where the car will attempt to change lanes when it shouldn't change lanes because it misreads the brake and the lane lines. I'm very curious to see if this is any better um, in this software version than in prior versions. It's It's been about 50-50 in the most recent versions of picking this up correctly. Um, and it's going to be after we get through this stoplight up here. All right, so we're finally coming to a uh, stop so we can get a little better visualization here on the stoplight. So as you can see, it's picking up um, all three and it shows, yep, they just turned green, and it shows this one hanging a little lower than the other two, so that's pretty cool. It's got all the lane markings. It's showing that blinking yellow. All right, so right up here, when we go through the slight bend to the left, this is where it has problems. We've got a car in front of us, so maybe it'll do better here. Okay, it, it did okay. I'm, I'm going to circle back and, uh, and try that again, uh, hopefully with no cars in front of me. So I don't seem to have the uh, all the updates that are supposed to be in there for the phone yet. I'll have to play with that. Oh, God. See, it did that. Damn it, I hate it when it does that. 
is really bad about that. And so if they're going to get autopilot in the city, they got to figure out those lane breaks on turns. Um, I mean, that is, that is easily the biggest weakness they have on, for city driving right now. I mean, stoplights and stop signs and all that, that's great. It's picking this up as a stop sign, not a yield sign, uh, but it did get the lights right. But anyway, they've they got to figure that, that business out because um, it is horrible about shifting lanes on you when there's a break in the lane lines. Um, and so I know there's a lot of people that are screaming at their computers right now saying, yes, but it's only intended for using on divided highways. I get it. I get it. But they're obviously showing us um, visualizations for in-city driving, which means they kind of expect you to be on autopilot in the city. Um, so if they're going to show that, they need to first work on improving uh, the, the areas that it really struggles in. And, and that's when there's a break in the lane lines, um, particularly on a turn and particularly on a left turn like we had right back there. Um, that's the first time it's ever done that to me on that particular spot. So that's a little bit disheartening because it feels like, you know, they've taken a step back here. Um, so, all right, it's got these stoplights right. Shows the, the marker there. Now it just turned green. That's great. Yeah, so stoplight recognition is uh, seems to be pretty solid. Um, and that's great, but they got to figure out how to keep the car in the right lane uh, for driving in the city. Otherwise, you know, stoplights are, uh, we're, we're not going to get to them if we're running into other cars. Alrighty, so let's, let's go through this trouble spot um, one more time. Oh good, we got the green light, it sees the green. Alright, I'm going to quickly put it on. Alright, so this is the trouble spot right up here and there's a car kind of flanking me. Nope, see it was going to take that turn. See, they got to figure that out. I mean, I know I'm sounding ungrateful here, but I mean, if they want to have a prayer of having city driving work on autopilot, they got to figure out the simple things like keep it in the right freaking lane. Um, it's just, it's crazy to me that they're working on showing us stoplights and stop signs and uh, they can't keep the car in the right damn lane. I mean, I'm starting to sound like a curmudgeon here, but uh, they got to figure that out. Um, oh, look, it, it wants me to park here. So one interesting thing here while we're waiting, obviously the, the camera up here is blocked by that car to seeing the stoplight so it's not displaying any traffic lights it displayed them right before it and now that car edged up and so it's seeing this guy on the left but it's not seeing the two in front and i mean i guess that uh i guess that makes sense but what will be interesting um is to see how it behaves once they start rolling out the uh the stopping at stoplights and so on what happens when it sees the stoplight and then it loses a stoplight when you get close to it and you become blocked by say a big box truck or whatever what's the car going to do is it going to continue through the light or is it going to slam on brakes and you know cause a scene behind you so that's going to be interesting because they're clearly relying on uh on vision here on the cameras to to detect the lights which i think is the right thing um, but it'll just be interesting to see how they solve that. Alright, so it sees the lights now, no colors yet. Uh, just now getting color on it. So, you know, if we were traveling along at, um, at normal speed there, It'd be interesting to see how quickly it determines that's actually a red light and it needs to stop and how soon it starts the stopping um, behavior. Or is it just going to wait until it gets right up on it and slam on brakes? So we will see.
you know so it's picking up all four of these lights but it's interesting it's got the one on the right it's got it very far back and there's no color on it um and it looks to me like all of those are pretty much in a in a straight line um and it's also not picking up the fact that this is a you know a a, a double light so to speak with it with a turn arrow we'll see we'll see what it does as i nudge forward here i'm going to nudge forward just a little bit Oh, it's not updating. All right. Showed those turning green, so that's nice. Yellow. Yep. Red. All right. So it's it's picking up pretty quickly um, on the changes in the stoplights. Green. Got it. I'm going to kind of go through here slowly. It still has that one standing off. And it never picks up that it's a double, so that's interesting. Okay, so a quick recap. Um, the visualizations are great. Uh, they're spot on. They detect the uh, stop lights and stop signs right away. That's fantastic. It, um, I've, I've noticed, I've driven around a little bit more. The, uh, the, it even picks up on blinking yellow lights, and it's pretty much real time, which is awesome. As soon as the light turns green, it picks up. As soon as it turns red, it picks up. Um, it's clear that it's doing it based on uh, line of sight. So the, I believe the front cameras need to be able to see the stoplight, um, which is cool. But it, uh, it, it makes me wonder about a couple things. Number one, um, it doesn't seem to pick up the stoplights very far away. So now if you're going 35 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour, not a big deal. But if you're doing 45 or 50 on a, on a larger road where there's stoplights, um, I kind of wonder how quickly it's going to pick up the stoplight and how quickly the car is going to react to the stoplight. Um, I'm kind of fearful that it's going to be a very abrupt and very um, jarring stop, right? And then the other thing I wonder is what if you what if the car sees the stoplight, but then it loses line of sight? Say there's a box truck in front of you, or the light happens to be up a little higher, or the light happens to be low, and there's just an SUV in front of you, and you're in your Model Three or, or Model S, Model X. That may not be such a such a big issue. Um, so what happens if you're driving along and it sees the light and it knows that it's green, but then you get close to the light, and it loses line of sight? Is, what's the car going to do? Is it going to slam on brakes until it can confirm that it's green? And what about the flip scenario? What about when it's red? Um, so I, I'll be really curious to see how they're handling these sorts of things when they start rolling out the um, the, the the full self-drive in the city. Um, and and just for a couple of other comments, I, I feel like we've taken a, a, a kind of half step backwards on just the normal autopilot lane keeping in the city. And I know that, that they want you to use autopilot um, on divided highways, or that's what the, the, uh, the, the manual says, uh, right in the car. So I get that. But they're starting to show us visualizations for full self-drive. So I'm pretty sure they're thinking that most people are using this thing in the city. Um, as you saw in the video, um, it, it really struggles when the lane lines disappear briefly. Um, and this almost always happens when there's a slight bend in the road. So going through an intersection where there's a slight bend, or as we saw in my video for the first time in that one particular spot today, it, uh, it decided to dive to the left because there was a break in the lane lines where I, uh, we were kind of at an intersection, I guess. There was a road that was coming into that road. But those lines are clearly marked and the spacing wasn't that big, so that one really surprised me. The other thing I've noticed, and I'll try to get some of this on video, is <clears throat> when there's, you know, let, let's say you're driving down a road and, and you're in a lane, and then that lane uh, splits into three lanes, say a turn lane on the right and a turn lane on the left, and, you know, typically there's dotted lines when those lanes diverge like that. On this software version, my Model 3 keeps trying to dive into those lanes. It figures it out and it straightens up, um, and it ends up in the right spot but it it it's getting confused um in spots where it didn't used to get confused so uh all this is really just a long-winded way of saying um 
that I, I would really like to see some improvement from Tesla on that sort of behavior uh, sooner rather than later because rolling out things where we can see the stoplights and the stop signs and the road markings and and all of these things is great um, but it it doesn't give me any more confidence that they're going to be able to nail city self-driving if they can't even keep the the car in the right lane uh, in a pretty innocuous situation where you know even a, a brand new teenage driver uh, would know what to do so I really want them to focus on those areas before we start getting uh, you know into into higher level things like stop signs stop lights and right turns and left turns let's focus on keeping the car in the uh, in the right lane just when we're supposed to be going straight so uh, I you know I, I sound like I'm a little bit down on the software um, and, and maybe I am um, it just feels like they're trying to take steps forward but there's still things missing in even the most basic sense that have to get corrected um, a couple other complaints while I'm complaining uh, the voice commands right now are just completely broken. I, I don't know why or what. I, I, I can only assume that their server is getting overloaded with everybody trying voice commands. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the, the, the voice commands right now are not working well at all. And um, um, so hopefully they get that solved soon. One other tip, if you're using the, um, the notifications on your phone, then it says it right in the uh, software notes. Um, so it's my fault for not seeing it. But what you need to do is you need to click on the Bluetooth uh, icon. You need to click on this guy right here. And you need to make sure all of these options are enabled um, so that everything works. Um, if you get those properly checked off, then you will start receiving notifications. It's reading all my text messages, which are which are great. I've not really be, been able to dictate back a reply because the the voice recognition right now is just not working, or it's working, I don't know, certainly less than half half the time, probably even less than that. So those are my thoughts on the uh, on the latest software. Um, I feel like they rushed this one out a little bit, and I'm I'm sure they were getting some pressure to uh, to get something out before Christmas. I'm thankful. The visualizations are cool, um, but they're but this this software release is pretty buggy. So hopefully we get a, a new point release soon to, to at least solve some of the things that aren't working. So that's it for me. Um, I will do another video soon testing Smart Summon just to see how that behaves on this new um, software. Uh, I used Smart Summon recently, uh, right before I got the update, and it worked beautifully. I mean, it was a it was a classic case where it was raining outside. I was coming out the mall. The car came right to me. It was beautiful. So, all right, that's it. I hope everybody's had a great holiday, and um, I'll be back with some more videos soon. I, I know I haven't posted many lately. Uh, I've I've been extremely busy. I've been traveling a lot for work, and uh, and and I've got a whole bunch of kids, young kids. So this is a busy, busy time of year for me. So uh, I will get to posting uh, more videos soon, um, especially as Tesla starts to roll out more features of, of full self driving. Y'all have a good one.